welcome to module 2 of advanced geotechnical engineering course. In this module, we are going to introduce ourselves and discuss in depth about permeability and seepage. So, this lecture is titled as uh, permeability and seepage 1. As we have introduced already in the introductory lecture, the module 2 which is uh, nothing but uh, permeability and seepage. The contents are the permeability, seepage forces and effective stresses due to seepage, measurement of the permeability in the laboratory as well as in the field, Laplace equations of fluid flow for one dimensional cases and two dimensional and three dimensional uh, seepage, flow nets, anisotropic and non homogeneous medium and confined and unconfined seepage. Along with this, we are going to discuss about some practical problems, particularly uh, with the earthen dam construction and also some canal embankments construction. Fluid flow through soils, the main motivation is that the ability of engineers to understand and predict the flow of fluids, usually water. In case if the water, if, if the fluid is other than water uh, that can be a contaminant, then lot of work is actually happening in the unsaturated soil mechanics. So, the ability of the engineers to understand and predict the flow of fluids, usually water in soils is essential for many applications in civil engineering. Many geotechnical structures or hydraulic structures which involve the water flow through the soils. So, the motivation is that the engineer has to understand and predict the uh, flow, flow of fluids in soils and uh, which actually has got lot of prominence in many civil engineering structures. For example, in the environmental engineering, a holding lagoon, we are interested uh, if you are storing a, a toxic liquid in the holding lagoon. Uh, we are interested how efficiently we can confine this uh, toxic liquid in the lagoon. So, if at all if there is a leakage happens, at what rate uh, is this toxic liquid escaping the holding lagoon and how long might it take the liquid to reach the ground water table and what can be done to slow down the rate of escape of the pollutant which is nothing but a toxic liquid. So, in this application problem, we are interested at what rate this toxic permeant escapes through the holding lagoon or how long might it take the liquid to reach to the ground water table and what can be done to slow down the rate of escape of the pollutant. In the other side, on the other hand, on the construction engineering particularly if you are constructing within uh, rivers or middle of uh, uh, a flowing uh, river or a flowing water body, we are interested in uh, confining uh, the particular localized area which is uh, done basically by coffer dams and uh, uh, the foundation for the uh, either bridges or the structure which is being constructed will be made. So, the temporary sheet file walls which are may be which can be in rectangular in plan dimensions or can be in circular in shape uh, or square in shape and they are actually constructed and then prevented the water flow into this uh, area and that area is actually available for construction of placement of the foundation. For example, in this slide a typical uh, cross section of a coffer dam is shown here and uh, basic idea is that when we retain the water surrounding water uh, and uh, into the uh, then what how you know the flow can actually take place is actually shown here. If you see here this particular portion the water enters the soil and then it actually flows up. So, if there is uh, you know some stresses which are actually high uh, get dropped here and there is a danger of uh, you know the foundation which is going to be constructed. In this particular slide, a typical example of a copper dam section is shown. So, wherein this is in a river bed, 
where we have actually got uh, stratified soil. So, the river bed uh, starts at uh, minus uh, 0 0.81 meters here and uh, uh, there is one type of soil which is actually here clay which is fine grained in nature. So, this uh, extent is about uh, 7 meters or so. Then we have got sand briefly which is uh, named as sand 1 a type of sand about 3 meters. Then for about 7 meters uh, we have here another sand type and then there is a clay. So, uh, if you are actually in order to construct a pier or a pier foundation, uh, what it is intended is to construct a coffer dam uh, which is uh, generally a sheet pile wall which is driven into the ground and thereafter after putting the necessary ties the excavation will be done up to a certain level. And here in this particular case if you see uh, uh, where there is a river bed and above that there is a filling which actually has happened and then this is the high tide level or upstream water level what it is called. Then in that situation in this practical situation this structural uh, structure stability has to be seen for the water flow from the high tide level to the downstream water level. So, this type of uh, practical situations are actually coming up now because of the ongoing infrastructure work which is happening currently uh, in many parts of the world. So, in the construction engineering important questions uh, that would be that would need to be answered are what will be the rate of water flow uh, uh, into the site. So, what will be the rate of water water inflow into the to the site and is it possible that the soil will liquefy or lose the stress and endanger the construction workers. So, our objective is to gain an understanding of the mechanics of the fluid flow in soil, so that engineering problems of this type can eventually be addressed. So, if you consider the fluid flow through the soils as it is actually shown in the, the slide, water flows along the edges of this uh, soil solids. So, this particular path is actually the flow takes place along the edges and these are the voids within the soil solids. So, water flows, so this is the path subtended by the flowing water because of the availability of the some energy. So, you can see here the flow which is actually subtended along the edges of the uh, soil solids. So, the soils are the basically assemblies of uh, solid particles and with the interconnected voids through which the water can flow from a point of higher energy to uh, low energy. So, soils are actually assemblies of uh, solid particles with interconnected voids through which the water can flow from a point of higher energy to lower energy. So, this study of the flow of water through porous soil media is important uh, very much in uh, geotechnical engineering because it involves the rate at which the water flow through the soil. So, uh, it, it, it enables us to determine uh, the rate of leakage through an act dam or involving the rate of settlement of a foundation. For example, if there is a uh, foundation which is actually resting on certain type of soil and if the water is uh, uh, escaping out of the soil, it will uh, tell us that how much time the settlements will take place or the rate of settlements of a foundation. And involving the strength that is the evolution of the factor of safety of an embankment. So, it depends upon depending upon the rate of flow of the uh, water out of the soil, the soil actually gains a strength. So, it involves that the evolution of the factor of safety of an embankment. So, uh, in, the, in the construction uh, from the fluid flow through point, point of view, we are interested involving the rate of uh, rate at which the water flows to the soil that is to estimate the determination of the rate of leakage through an earth dam and involving the rate of settlement of a foundation or involving the strength gain that is the evolution of the factor of safety of an embankment or a dam which is being constructed on a soil. Uh, if you look into this the water does not flow uh, from point A to point B. So, in this uh, particular uh, um, slide uh, these are the soil solid particles and uh, point A and point B which is actually shown here and this is actually called as the flow path which is on the macroscopic scale. Um, but uh, in, 
in reality as in micro point of view microscopic point of view if you look into this and this is the path which actually which is subtended by the flowing uh, water. So, this is called micro this microscopic length is called or this path subtended by the actual path subtended by the uh, flowing water is called winding path or the tortuous path. This length is called the or this particular ratio of this uh, length to this my, uh, macroscopic length is called the tortuostic factor, tortuostic factor. So, water does not flow uh, from A to B if there is uh, you know the total head or energy is actually same. If water can flow from A to B if there is a difference of head only that means that if the head at A is higher than head at B uh, then there is a possibility that water flow can take place from A to B. Similarly, if the head at B is higher than head at A, then water can also flow from B to A. So, uh, this path subtended by the actual path subtended by the flow of water, uh, the path subtended by the flowing water in the soil solids is known as the tortuous path. And the ratio of the tortuous uh, length of the tortuous path to the length of the act, uh, microscopic length or length of uh, micro flow path which is called as a tortuosity factor. Uh, we have actually studied the Bernoulli's equation and we have defined this Bernoulli's equation has uh, uh, total head is equal to pressure head plus velocity head plus elevation head. So, in geotechnical engineering uh, we also use this the total head uh, at a point uh, in water uh, under motion can be given by the sum of pressure, velocity and uh, elevation heads. So, P w by gamma w represents the pressure head and which actually has got the units of the length and V square by 2 z uh, is the uh, velocity head and V is the velocity with which the water is actually flowing through the soil and z is the elevation head. Uh, if you look into uh, this particular uh, you know application of this uh, Bernoulli's equation in uh, soil mechanics is concerned, the velocity head is actually neglected that means that the V square by 2 z the kinetic uh, or velocity head uh, uh, also has the units of the length, but uh, since the water flowing velocity is typically has very very uh, small, the kinetic head or the velocity head is uh, typically negligible compared to the, that of the pressure head and velocity heads. Uh, for this reason, you know the velocity head is neglected in soil mechanics, and jet represents the uh, you know elevation with respect to an arbitrary datum. The datum you know, when we need to if you have a datum and uh, the jet represents the elevation with respect to an arbitrary datum. So, the value is the distance of a point at which the head is being measured above the datum. So, this can be either positive if the point is above the datum, it can be negative if the point is below the datum. So, therefore, the total head can be pressure head plus uh, uh, elevation head. So, water flows in soils uh, only when there is a gradient uh, in head h that means that a difference of uh, head between that is uh, uh, when it is available then uh, uh, you know there is a possibility of the flow. And the lack of a uh, gradient is the head implies that water is not flowing that means that if there is a inadequate head difference h then that means that uh, the water is actually not flowing. Whenever there is a water flow in soils there is energy dissipation occurs. Suppose when there is a water flow in soils, the energy dissipation occurs. So, in soils water or permeant always flow down the gradient that is water flow from higher energy region to, uh, to the low, lower energy regions. So, the flow water flow in soils is only possible with the possibility of the gradient in head h and energy dissipation and then water flow takes place. So, in soils basically the water uh, or permeant uh, which is uh, always uh, flows down the gradient and that is water flow uh, occurs from higher energy regions to lower energy regions. And in this slide example a slide which is actually shown a typical cross section having two uh, soil profiles with a ground water table uh, which is located at a certain depth below the ground surface and uh, two points which are uh, 1 and 2 and one is actually at a uh, z 1 meters above the uh, reference datum and is measuring a head of uh, h 1 
and uh, a pressure head of H2 is measured at a, for a point 2 which is jet 2 meters above the reference datum. Uh, the thickness of the soil layer uh, which is under uh, discussion is about uh, H meet, H units. So, the total head here at point 1 is nothing but the pressure head plus elevation head which is nothing but H1 plus Z1 and here total head here is that uh, pressure head plus elevation uh, head that is H2 plus Z2. So, uh, here as H1 plus Z1 is equal to H2 plus Z2 is equal to H and uh, the total head difference is actually 0. So, though you know there is a difference in pressures here, uh, pressure heads which are actually measured here, the flow will not take place either from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1. In uh, another example which uh, we have discussed in the previous module about the uh, capillarity situation. Let us assume that we have got the heads in the static water uh, in capillarity tube. Uh, we actually have discussed that this particular phenomenon which actually can occur uh, because of the uh, in case of real uh, soils uh, the soil solid water uh, air solid water interaction because of the air solid water interaction. So, here if you have got uh, a ground water table here or the water level and which is actually if it, if it is considered as a datum and if there, that uh, point is say 2 and uh, H C is the head over which that uh, rise of water has actually taken place uh, because of the capillarity phenomenon. So, that point B 1. So, let us consider here elevation head uh, for the point 1 is H C units above this uh, point 2 and uh, pressure head here as the pressure head is actually negative and uh, which is actually minus C. So, the total head is nothing but H C plus uh, uh, minus H C the pressure head is negative here because of the total head is equal to 0. In case of this situation here where you have got elevation head is 0 and pressure head is 0, so total head is 0. So, therefore, the capillarity uh, flow is not a uh, you know a typical flow situation. There is no flow of water in this situation which is actually occurring because of the uh, air, soil, solid and water interaction. So, this is actually shown uh, you know fluid uh, at rest in soil uh, which is shown in uh, no flow condition and here this is the zone of the uh, capillary, uh, capillary rays. If the soil is actually completely saturated it actually maintains that negative pressure here, but if there is a partial saturation there is a possibility that this pressure actually drops down to close to 0 and then the, the dry soil will actually will be there above this level above the capillarity ground water table level and uh, this is the ground water table level and below this uh, there is a possibility of uh, hydrostatic water pressure that is pwz is equal to gamma wz so as the depth increases the water pressure uh, increases below the ground water table at this point at the surface of the ground water table the pressure of the water is equal to 0 because it is open to the atmospheric surface so uh, in this particular slide uh, what we have seen is that we have got a confined aquifer uh, which is uh, uh, shown with a reference datum and uh, which is actually having a, uh, a total head of uh, H1 and uh, on the uh, left hand side and total head of H2 on the right hand side. So, from the reference datum if you look into this and this particular point if it, if, uh, it is named as 1 and if this is uh, termed as 2 then this point is uh, nothing but uh, H1 is equal to P1 by gamma W that is not the, nothing but the pressure head plus uh, elevation head at point 1 for point 1 that is uh, Z1. So, P1, P1 by gamma W plus Z1 and in this case it is P2 by gamma W plus Z2 which is nothing but the total head at H2. So, if you observe that and uh, if H1 is greater than H2 that means that water flows uh, down the hydraulic gradient from uh, 1 to 2 that means that the water flows down from here to here. So, it is actually if with H1 greater than H2 water flows down the gradient. So, the difference between these two points difference of the heads between two points here 1 and 2 
which is actually shown here, um, which is actually called uh, H1 minus H2 and which is called as the head drop or head loss. So, fluids, fluid flows down the uh, hydraulic gradient not necessary down uh, downhill. So, fluid actually down the fluid actually flows down depending upon the the way the uh, you know the, the presence of the uh, higher head and lower heads uh, prevalent in the real situations. Uh, the in uh, flow of water through soils the main important assumptions which are actually worked out are the the soil is actually assumed to be fully saturated and the boundaries between the uh, solids uh, are assumed to be uh, frictionless boundaries and the flow is actually laminar that is in case of uh, uh, soil mechanics particularly uh, flow of water through the porous media or soils. The Reynolds number which is actually defined as rho w into v into d 10 by mu w where d 10 is nothing but the effective particle size, mu w is nothing but the dynamic viscosity of water and V is the discharge velocity, the water velocity uh, which is actually through that macroscopic length uh, or macroscopic area and rho w is nothing but the mass density of the uh, flowing fluid. So, for a flow to be laminar in case of uh, uh, you know soil mechanics it is actually maintained as Re less than 1, the maximum the upper bound value is about 10 or so. So, in this uh, figure a cross section a typical uh, uh, cross section is shown here where we have got a datum here and a point A and a point B we are actually interested in flow of water from A to B. So, the point A is having a elevation head of uh, Z A and a pressure head of uh, P A by gamma W. In this case uh, point B having elevation head of Z B and uh, pressure head of uh, P by gamma W equal to H B. So, uh, P by gamma W, so the total head is equivalent to uh, uh, P B by gamma W plus uh, Z B uh, which is actually nothing but uh, uh, small H B which is indicated and here total head is nothing but P A by gamma W plus Z A uh, which is uh, indicated here as H suffix A. So, the difference in head between point A and point B uh, over a length L which is uh, if you observed here H minus H A minus H B which is actually called as a head loss or head drop over a length L over a length L and uh, the soil actually flows uh, the cross sectional area which is actually open to the flow is uh, this one. So, this is actually along the length of the along the in the direction of the flow and this is perpendicular to the direction of the flow. So, if this uh, 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 is actually having a say uh, 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 for example, the entire uh, length for example here if this is actually having a unit cross section area A then if this length L then that means that the flow is actually occurring over a uh, volume of A into L which is also called as a uh, fluid flow fluid phase or which the flow is actually occurring. So, the head loss between the two points can be given by delta H is equal to H A minus H B which is nothing but P A by gamma W plus H A uh, Z A. Uh, minus P B by gamma W plus Z B. So, the head loss delta H can be expressed as in a non dimensional form uh, by using a definition called hydraulic gradient. Hydraulic gradient is equal to delta H by L where I is uh, nothing but uh, hydraulic gradient, L is the length of the flow or which is the loss of head occurred. So, there is uh, you know a relationship between uh, velocity and hydraulic gradient where we have defined in the previous slide as I is nothing but the uh, there is a non dimensional form of uh, hydraulic gradient over a uh, the uh, which is nothing but a hydraulic gradient and which is defined as head loss over a length L. So, this uh, particular slide shows the variation of discharge velocity with uh, hydraulic gradient on the y axis what we see is the velocity on the and then on the x axis what we see is the uh, hydraulic gradient I and it can be seen that it is divided into three zones the zone 1 and zone 2 and zone 3 and zone 1 is actually uh, termed as a laminar flow zone it, it, it appears that you know this uh, V is actually proportional to I in this region and uh, it exhibits a linear uh, linear relationship and then beyond uh, zone 1 uh, once this zone 1 boundary is crossed it is actually termed as zone 2 which is called as a trans transient zone and beyond uh, zone 2 which is actually termed as zone 3 which is called the turbulent zone. So, 
uh, as the I increases gradually that is hydraulic gradient increases gradually the flow remains in laminar in zone 1 and zone 2 mostly and V bears a relation linear relationship with the I. So, what we have understood is that the flow remains in laminar in zone 1 and zone 2 and V bears a relation linear relationship with I. At higher hydraulic gradients the flow becomes turbulent that means that at higher hydraulic gradients when the hydraulic gradients are high here the flow is actually becoming turbulent. So, in most soils V is proportional to I uh, especially in gravel and very coarse sands the turbulent flow conditions may exist and V, v is proportional to I is not really valid. So, in most soils V is actually proportional to I and the laminar uh, flow conditions are actually established and uh, they are satisfied. But in some gravelly soils or the soils which are actually having very large uh, particle sizes or coarse sands, turbulent flow conditions may exist. So, this uh, particular uh, relationship with between the discharge velocity and hydraulic gradient it was given by Darcy way back in 1856 and this, this is a simple equation for which the discharge velocity of the water through saturated soils can be expressed by a relationship known as V is equal to K i which is popularly known as Darcy's law and uh, where K is the quotient of permeability the units are meter per second which is also called as Darcy's quotient of permeability. This is the one which is actually can be measured in the either in the laboratory or in the field and V uh, which is uh, nothing but the discharge velocity or superficial velocity which is the basically the quantity of water flowing in unit time through a unit cross section area of soil at right angles to the direction of flow. So, uh, the, the flow is actually through the pore spaces in soil and not through the cross section area because of that you know the discharge velocity is basically uh, is uh, called as a superficial velocity and this is formulated based on the observations of flow of water through clean sands. This particular Darcy's law which is actually has been uh, you know formulated based on the observation through flow of water through clean sands. And further the Darcy's equation is combined with a continuity equation which is nothing but Q is equal to V into A and A is the uh, you know cross section area over which the flow is occurring and uh, which into multi multiplied by V we get a discharge that is Q is equal to V into A is equal to K i A where K is the quotient of uh, permeability and delta H by L is nothing but the hydraulic gradient that is head loss over a length L and A is the uh, area over which the flow is actually happening. So, Q is equal to total rate of flow through the cross section area A and K is the Darcy's quotient of permeability. Uh, this Darcy's quotient of permeability is defined as a property of the soil and which is actually uh, defined as ease with which water can flow through the soil. That means that some soils allow the water flow uh, very easily and some soils very difficult to for the water to flow through the some soils. That means that uh, you know this particular property is used uh, in, uh, in many ways in constructing many geotechnical structures. So, here in this particular slide a term a new term called seepage velocity is introduced. The seepage velocity is actually velocity which is actually happening through the voids. That means that if we consider uh, you know uh, a cluster of soil particles and water which is actually filled in the voids and the water when the water flow is occurring from uh, uh, say in this case from uh, top to bottom and uh, what actually happen if you take uh, a uh, mag uh, magnified view of uh, uh, the distance between soil particles. So, if this is actually happen to be A and this is actually nothing but the uh, that is area of the voids. So, uh, here here before entering the velocity is V and here the velocity which is actually within the voids is called as the seepage velocity. Again once it crosses the void it is actually discharge velocity. So, here because of the interconnectivity of the voids through the soil only the seepage velocity the flow of water through the soil is uh, you know which is actually uh, indicated by a seepage velocity with the V suffix S. Yes. Suppose if this is actually indicated as a two phase diagram as is actually shown here, then we have got water and soil solids and uh, the total area of this is that area of water or area of the uh, wa water that is nothing but the A V and the area of the solids and which is nothing but the A is equal to A V plus A S 
and uh, from the uh, uh, for the unit width of the sample if you take and the void ratio which is nothing but the volume of voids to volume of the solids with that we can write as a v by a s and using the principle of continuity q is equal to v into a and uh, for a uh, this uh, continuity equation now we can write it as v into a that means that here v and then area which is actually available here is a and when it comes to v s here the width got reduced now a v which is nothing but the v s into a v. So, by using this v s is equal to we can write it by a by a v into v and this for a unit width of the sample we can write it as a v by v by volume of voids which is nothing but you know from if you take the definition of the porosity we can write it as v s is equal to v by n. So, the seepage velocity is actually nothing but 1 by n times the discharge velocity. So, as the porosity cannot be more than 100 percent V s always uh, greater than V, V s is always greater than the seepage velocity always greater than discharge velocity. So, as the as a particle of water proceeds from A to B it exerts a frictional drag on the soil particles that means that when the particle when the water is actually flowing from A to B because of the some head difference which is actually happening between A to B the water actually flows from A to B and the in the in the this is in the this is called the direction of the seepage. So, when the water flow is occurring from A to B as a particle of water proceeding from A to B it exerts a frictional drag on a soil particles. So, in turn it produces a, this so this so called frictional drag which produces uh, a seepage pressure in the soil structure. Sometimes if the seepage pressure is excessive then it can lead to a failure in a uh, for a geotechnical structure. So, seepage pressure is due to flow of water through the voids. When the water is actually flowing through the oil, uh, voids because of the frictional, uh, frictional drag exerted by the flowing water onto the soil solids the seepage pressure is actually generated. So, because of the frictional, frictional drag the hydraulic uh, head decreases steadily on every flow line. That means that as it actually uh, drops down from A to B because the energy is actually transferred in the form of exerting a frictional drag on the soil particles the head actually decreases steadily uh, from say from A to B in this example. And we actually have uh, discussed that uh, the total stress uh, which is nothing but the effective stress plus pore water pressure. And the, we also have discussed this for a case where uh, no flow condition that means that uh, uh, there is uh, no difference in head between uh, two points under consideration. In that case you know we say that uh, hydrostatic pressures uh, prevail. So, changes in geostatic stresses, geostatic stresses are nothing but when the earth surface is horizontal and having a unit weight which is actually more or less uh, constant uh, along the uh, in uh, all directions. And uh, the uh, change in uh, geostatic stress with the flow of water the soils if you look into this when water flows to the soil it, ex it exerts a drag force called seepage force that we have actually discussed. And the presence of seepage force which causes the changes in the direction of flow which causes uh, changes in the pore water pressure and the effective stresses in the soils because of that the changes actually happen. So, uh, in this in this uh, particular slide a three cases uh, which are possible one is that when no flow takes place through the soil a hydrostatic condition. So, here we have got uh, a soil which is saturated and having a, a thickness h and uh, h 1 is the head of water here which is maintained constant and uh, this limb which is uh, almost at the same surface. Uh, then uh, what we can actually see is that the total stress is nothing but uh, gamma w h 1 plus gamma w h 1 plus gamma sat h and the pore water pressure is nothing but uh, as the water uh, is up to the surface and soil is completely saturated. So, it is nothing but the gamma w h 1 plus gamma w into h 1 plus h. So, here the effective stress is nothing but total stress minus uh, uh, pore water pressure uh, with this what will actually happen is that. Uh, here uh, we have got gamma dash h that is here um, uh, that is this particular condition is a no flow uh, condition 
and uh, uh, it also tells that uh, uh, the head loss is actually delta h is equal to 0, because uh, uh, both uh, at this, uh, this point and this point that uh, the total head is actually 0 are the same. So, because of that what will happen is that the head loss is actually 0 and another thing is that uh, you know uh, if h 1 is say uh, for example, even if it is 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters or 5 kilometers for example, the changes in the effective stress is uh, uh, not there. That means, that it is independent of the, uh, the thickness of the water, uh, the height of water above the ground surface. If the ground, ground water surface uh, for example, say within this uh, h, then you know it can actually uh, increase or decrease depending upon the, the changes which actually can happen. For example, if there is a depletion of water table, the effective stress increases. If there is an increase in uh, water height, there is a, de, uh, there is a, uh, a decrease in the uh, effective stress. So, here if there is a excessive increase in the effective stress and that also can lead to you know the crushing of soil particles and then uh, the collapse of the soil. And uh, if there is a excessive uh, decrease in the effective stress that also can lead to the problems which we are going to discuss. In case 2, uh, here what we did is that when the flow takes place to the soil and we are actually referring here what we did is that we took this uh, limb down uh, and uh, that is below the surface and uh, where uh, we, we say that the when this uh, situation is there water flows from uh, 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 through the soil from upward uh, the in the downward direction here. So, this is the you know flow of water which is actually happening to the soil and uh, this h uh, which is uh, uh, either difference between water levels between this surface and this surface and which is actually below this sur below this uh, surface. And uh, for this case if you look into this the total stress remains same that is uh, nothing but gamma w h 1 and uh, the soil is actually saturated here again gamma w h 1 plus gamma sat h. But uh, if in case in the previous uh, case 1 when there is no flow of water then we actually have said that uh, you know the pore water pressure is like this that is gamma w h 1 plus gamma w h 1 plus h. But now here what is actually happening is that the water which is actually flowing from top to bottom here that means that here the uh, there is a head which is actually uh, available at h units is available and by the time actually it comes out of this the available head is actually 0 for the water to flow through the uh, flow. That means that uh, over a length here so here the hydraulic gradient is nothing but i is nothing but uh, uh, small h by capital H and uh, uh, at the at the beginning of this uh, point the point where the soil surface is actually commences where the head available is h and at this point the head available is 0. At this midpoint let us say h by 2 units from here it is 0.5 times the small h is actually available here the 50 percent of the head available that means that 50 percent is already uh, you know uh, got dissipated or spent in uh, making the water flow from uh, top surface to the middle surface here. So, because of that reason there is a drop in the or decrease in the pore water pressure because of the loss of this head. So, the pore water pressure at point at this point is nothing but gamma w plus h 1 plus h minus h. So, that makes actually the pore water pressure because when the water flow takes place from top to bottom uh, at this point it is gamma w into h 1 plus h minus small h. So, with that now again if you take uh, the effective stress which is nothing but the uh, total stress minus pore water pressure at this point there is no change because the gamma w h 1, but here what actually happens is that the pore water pressure uh, when, the, when, the, when there is no water flow we have got effective stress as gamma 1 h, um, but now because uh, you know the uh, these two terms will get cancelled. Now what will have is that gamma 1 gamma dash h plus h gamma w that means that here when water flows from point uh, top to bottom that is in downward flow there is an increase in the uh, effective stress. And uh, if I if we replace that h, h uh, as i times h we can actually say that gamma dash h plus i times uh, capital H gamma w where h is the thickness of the soil layer over which the flow is actually happening and gamma w is the unit weight of water. Now, let us consider a case where uh, case 3 when the flow takes place to the soil upward flow that means that what we have done is that this limb actually has been taken 
above this water surface and this water surface is actually maintained and this level or head is actually maintained here. So, when these are connected uh, here inter, uh, connected and the water actually flows from this point this end to the this end. So, uh, this upward flow uh, if you look into this uh, decreases the effective stresses in the soils. The total stress now if you look into this again it remains same gamma w h 1 and gamma w h 1 plus gamma sat h, but uh, here if you look into this the pore water pressure without any flow without any flow is nothing but gamma w h 1 plus h, but now what is actually happening is that the head available here is uh, uh, small h, the head available here is 0. That means that the hydraulic gradient over uh, this length is that nothing but i is equal to uh, small h by capital H and uh, because of this what is actually happening is that the pore water the head available at this point is uh, uh, is nothing but uh, gamma. So, the pore water pressure ordinate here is gamma w into uh, h 1 plus h plus uh, small h and here it is gamma w into h 1. So, because of this what will happen is that if you take the difference of this and this because of the this particular condition what is actually explained here with that the effective stress is nothing but gamma dash h, gamma dash h minus h gamma w. When, I, when we replace that h as uh, uh, i times uh, capital H uh, uh, capital H then we can write this effective stress at this particular point as gamma dash h minus h gamma w. That means that when the water flow takes place from uh, uh, in the uh, in the downward direction, we have seen that effective stress increase. When the water flow is taking place in upward direction, uh, this particular situation is actually possible in the real conditions, like in Artesian conditions, where you have got a more head of water than the uh, you know hydrostatic head which is actually existing there, uh, or it actually has got a source uh, of water. Uh, and that particular uh, previous layer which is actually beneath a impervious layer. In that situation this type of upward flow conditions are more common. So, this gamma dash, dash h minus h gamma w wherein uh, upward flow causes the decrease in the effective stress. So, what we have understood is that seepage is the flow of water to the soil and it is a basically it is a phenomenon which actually hap happen in soil and uh, basically it exerts a frictional drag on soil particles and uh, which is actually called a seepage force which uh, results uh, a, in a head loss. And the seepage force play a very important role in destabilizing uh, geotechnical structures. And uh, the seepage force per unit volume which is actually called a seepage pressure. Say for example, here uh, the downward seepage increases the effective stress that is what we have actually said sigma dash is equal to gamma dash h uh, plus i gamma w uh, into capital H. So, I gamma w when I replace it with uh, uh, P s then what we can say that uh, downward C pace increases the effective stress and upward C pace actually decreases the effective stress that is nothing but sigma dash is equal to gamma dash h minus uh, P s h where P s is equal to I gamma w where C pace pressure which is actually having a units of kilo Newton per meter cube and P s is indicated by uh, I gamma w. So, if you take an hydraulic structure, uh, uh, the water is actually retained uh, uh, at the upstream and downstream. So, here when the water actually flows uh, from A to B along this hydraulic structure, at this the here in this portion uh, there is an increase in the effective stress and in this portion particularly there is a decrease in effective stress. So, the decrease in the effective stress uh, particular phenomenon causes uh, you know situation where there is a possibility of uh, uh, you know endangering the stability of a uh, particular hydraulic structure. Uh, so, on the right hand side uh, what we see is that seepage forces uh, decrease the effective stresses reduce and the resistance uh, to the embedment also decreases. So, uh, the stability of a structure is actually highly depend upon this particular uh, portion where there is a uh, you know uh, upward flow occurs. So, seepage pressure uh, seepage stresses play a key role in reducing the, the stability of a geotechnical structure retaining water or any uh, water body. The hydraulic gradient at which the effective stress becomes 0 is called as the critical hydraulic gradient. So, here we are introducing a term called critical hydraulic gradient. Previously, we said that uh, hydraulic gradient is nothing but I is equal to H by L, H is nothing but a head loss or a head drop over a length L. But uh, if the hydraulic gradient at which the effective stress is becoming 0 is known as the critical hydraulic gradient I suffix C. 
So, for example, here we have discussed in the previous uh, slides that sigma dash effective stress is equal to uh, gamma dash h minus i uh, i, ga, uh, i gamma w uh, that is uh, uh, nothing but uh, with uh, uh, gamma dash gamma w h is equal to 0. With that under these uh, circumstances uh, when i tends to i c uh, the effective stress actually becomes 0 that is gamma dash h minus gamma w h is equal to 0. Under these circumstances, the cohesionless soils, particularly the soils without any binding uh, capacity, cannot support any weight. So, when this uh, situation of uh, critical hydraulic gradient conditions exist, the soil loses its supporting capacity. Moreover, as I tends to I C, the soil becomes much looser and permeability of the soil increases drastically. That means that when I tends to I C, soil becomes much looser and the permeability of uh, the soil increases. Uh, drastically. So, here we are actually defining uh, in this particular side a condition called quick condition or boiling condition in cohesionless soils. Uh, uh, the particular situation which is actually shown here is that uh, there is a point B uh, and then there is a point A and point A is at the elevation that is uh, the datum and uh, total head at A is equal to H and total head at uh, B is equal to small b. And uh, here uh, what we can see is that uh, we have got a head of water and which is uh, nothing but uh, uh, here that is H minus B and uh, total uh, head if you look into this uh, pressure head is nothing but uh, uh, the H minus B plus B that is H units. So, at point A uh, the pore water pressure uh, at point A is gamma W H and at point B uh, that is uh, at this is at this point here. Okay. So, at uh, A that is uh, sigma V dash that is nothing but gamma sat B that is uh, the thickness of the soil layer into the saturated into weight of the soil uh, uh, into B minus gamma W H. So, uh, when I is nothing but uh, H minus B is nothing but the head loss over a length of the soil that is uh, B. So, we can simplify that H is equal to B into I plus 1 uh, by writing I is equal to H minus B by B and by, uh, by simplifying we can write h is equal to b into i plus 1 and by substituting uh, in uh, sigma v dash is equal to gamma sat into b minus gamma w h uh, we can by substituting we can write uh, gamma sat b into minus gamma w b into i plus 1. So, we have written h in terms of uh, b, in b and i. So, for quick condition to takes place sigma v dash has to be 0 that means that i as tends to become i c. So, with that what will happen is that I c is equal to gamma dash by gamma w which is nothing but G s minus 1 by 1 plus e or G s minus 1 by uh, specific volume that is 1 plus e is indicated as specific volume. So, I c is equal to gamma dash by gamma w uh, which is nothing but G s minus 1 by 1 plus e. So, quicksand uh, there is a uh, you know a terminology which is actually uh, comes uh, when there is a uh, you know the loss of the effective stress actually happens uh, drastically because of the phenomenon what we discussed is that when the water flow happens to the soil uh, in the upward direction the soil loses all its uh, strength uh, and then it loses the supporting capacity. And we actually have got a phenomenon called quicksand uh, uh, phenomenon. So, quicksand uh, phenomenon is basically a condition where water flow occurs uh, in the upward direction and then there is a possibility of the you know the loss of the effective stress. So, uh, one should note that quicksand is a is not a type of sand, but a flow condition occurring within cohesionless soil or a soil which are actually not having any adequate binding capacity. Uh, when it is actually effective stress is reduced to 0 due to upward flow of water. So, quicksand occurs in nature when water is being forced upward under pressurizer conditions. So, in this case the pressure of the escaping water exceeds the weight of the soil and the sand grains are forced apart and the result is, the result is that the soil has no capa capability uh, to support a load. So, why does actually quicksand condition or boiling occurs mostly in fine sands or silts uh, basically uh, uh, is because of the uh, you know the binding uh, capacity uh, which is actually there. So, some practical examples of the quick conditions are that the excavations in granular materials behind the coffer dams along uh, riverside, alongside rivers and any place where the artesian pressures exist 
uh, that is where the head of the water is greater than the usual uh, static water pressure. So, this uh, phenomenon what we said we have actually also said that when there is uh, uh, you know uh, higher head of water than the uh, you know in the soil beneath because of the either because of the water source or because of the some uh, uh, previous layer beneath the uh, impervious layer. So, in that situation um, the artesian conditions may exist uh, and when a suppose if the excavation is actually made in such type of soils then they can actually lose to the uh, subjected to a phenomenon called a boiling condition and particularly it can lead to a, a failure. When a previous underground structure is continuous and connected to a play, uh, place where head is higher. So, and sometimes when behind the river embankments uh, when you are constructed or levees uh, which are constructed to protect the floods. So, the quick and quick conditions are actually popular uh, particularly in excavations in granular, me, behind, granular materials behind the uh, in the river bed particularly with uh, sandy soils and any place where artesian pressures exist and if the soil is actually uh, you know uh, is dis displaced because of the excavation because for, uh, for installation of the utilities or some other uh, regions, reasons. So, uh, in this particular uh, lecture what we actually have introduced to ourselves is that this uh, permeability and C phase 1 wherein we actually have discussed that uh, you know how and how important is uh, water flow uh, through the soil particularly in the application and design of the uh, geotechnical structures. And we also have uh, defined a term called hydraulic gradient and uh, also a term called velocity and uh, seepage velocity. And uh, seepage velocity what we said is that uh, is uh, uh, with a relationship uh, V s is equal to V by n and uh, seepage velocity is always uh, more than V because seepage velocity is the velocity which is actually happening through the voids of the soil. And uh, then we introduced a term called hydraulic gradient which is nothing but uh, I is equal to uh, h head loss over a length L. Uh, then uh, we also have introduced a term called uh, uh, critical hydraulic gradient uh, particularly uh, I is equal to defined as h c by L and uh, where h c is nothing but uh, head loss at a uh, particular place where the effective stress is tending to become 0. And uh, we also have discussed the three cases one uh, a no flow condition where total head is actually difference is 0 and one condition is that downward flow. In that case what we have discussed is that uh, when the water flows up, uh, downward there is an increase in the effective stress. When uh, water flows uh, uh, upward because of the certain uh, prevalent conditions and it can actually lead to the decrease in effective stress. One practical example what we discussed is actually a quicksand condition and we said that quicksand is actually not a type of sand, it is a condition uh, of flow condition where water flows uh, which is actually arising because of the water flow in the upward direction.